Hello! In this video, we are going to discuss the arctangent of x. So let x be any real number and consider the following sequence. Then it turns out these two sequences both converge to the arctangent of x. In fact, if x is greater than 0, then this sequence is increasing to the arctangent of x, while this sequence is decreasing to the arctangent of x. And our goal in this video is to see geometrically how that happens. Right, so we're only going to be considering the case x is greater than 0 in this video. And if x is greater than 0, then what does arctangent of x represent geometrically? Well, one way of representing it is as follows. So let's consider a circle of radius 1. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a line segment tangent to the circle until we reach a length x. And now we're going to draw a line from this point to the center of the circle. Well, then it turns out the length of this arc is precisely equal to the arc tangent of x. Why is that the case? Well, because we have the following formula for arc length, s equals r theta, where s is the length of the arc, r is the radius of the circle, and theta is the measure of the central angle. Now, the radius of the circle is just 1, so r theta is equal to theta, and from right triangle trigonometry, we know that the tangent of theta is equal to x over 1. So tangent of theta is just equal to x. And then if we solve for theta, we get theta is equal to the arc tangent of x. So theta is equal to the arc tangent of x. So yeah, the arc length is precisely arc tangent of x. And our goal by the end of this video is to see how these two sequences approach this arc length. Now before we get into that, let's first try to understand how this sequence behaves geometrically. What does it look like when we go from one term in this sequence to another? So let's consider the top half of the unit circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line segment tangent to the circle, and we're going to go until we reach a length xn. Now, a length of xn makes sense, because it turns out if x is greater than 0, then all of the terms in this sequence are greater than 0. So now that we have a segment of length xn, what we're going to do from here is we are going to find a line segment in this diagram that has length xn plus 1. And to see how we can do that, let's first draw a line segment from this point to the center of the circle. And now let's drop a perpendicular from this point. Now, if we apply the Pythagorean theorem on this right triangle, we have that the length of the hypotenuse is equal to square root of 1 squared plus xn squared, right? So the length is just square root of 1 plus xn squared. And now let's notice that these two right triangles are similar. So their side lengths are proportional. So if we label this side length A, we can solve for a. We have that a over 1 is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 plus xn squared. And so a is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 plus xn squared. And then if we label this side length b, we can solve for b using similar triangles. We have b over xn is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 plus xn squared. So if we multiply xn on both sides, what we get is b is equal to this. Now remember, our whole goal has been to find a line segment of length xn plus 1. And to see how we can find one, what we're going to do is we are going to draw a line from this point to the other side of the unit circle. And also, we know that this is a right angle, 
And if we label this side length C, well, we can solve for C using similar triangles because these two right triangles are similar. So by similar triangles, we know that this side length over this side length is equal to this side length over this side length. In other words, we have C over one is equal to Xn over square root of one plus Xn squared all over one over square root of one plus Xn squared plus one. And now let's just multiply both the numerator and denominator by square root of one plus Xn squared. Well, then this just simplifies down to this, but this is precisely equal to Xn plus one. So C is equal to Xn plus one. So what have we done here? We started out by drawing a line segment of length xn tangent to the circle. From there, we found a line segment which has length xn plus 1. So we have gone from one term in this sequence to the next geometrically. But it still feels like there's something missing here, right? What can we do with this? Well, the realization is that this is nothing but trigonometry in disguise. What we're going to do is we are going to assign each term in this sequence to an angle. So for each n, we let theta n be equal to the arctangent of xn. Well then, that means we have tangent of theta n equal to xn for all n. Now the claim is that this angle has measure theta n. To see why, well let's initially write the measure of this angle as alpha. Well then, from right triangle trigonometry, we know that the tangent of alpha is equal to xn over 1, which is just xn. So we have tangent of alpha equals xn. And so because this is a right triangle, we know we can solve for alpha. We get alpha is just equal to the arctangent of xn. But arctangent of xn is just equal to theta n. So we have alpha equal to theta n. So I'm just going to replace alpha here with theta n. Now we know xn is equal to tangent of theta n. But then, since this is just the unit circle, we know from trigonometry that this side length is cosine of theta n, and this side length is sine of theta n. So what we see here is sine of theta n is equal to this guy, while cosine of theta n is equal to this guy. And since the n that we are working with here is arbitrary, these are actually true for all n. So then what about xn plus 1? Well, actually, the thing to realize here is this angle is a central angle of the circle that intersects this arc. This angle is an inscribed angle intersecting the same arc. And from the inscribed angle theorem, that tells us that this angle is precisely half of the central angle, right? So this angle is just theta n over 2. But then, from trigonometry, the tangent of theta n over 2 is equal to xn plus 1 over 1. In other words, we have tangent of theta n over 2 equal to xn plus 1. And if we solve for theta n over 2, we have theta n over 2 equal to the arctangent of xn plus 1, but based on how we defined each of the angles, the arctangent of xn plus 1 is also equal to theta n plus 1. So we have theta n over 2 equal to theta n plus 1. So if we multiply 2 to the other side, we get 2 theta n plus 1 equal to theta n. And since n is arbitrary, this is true for all n. So I'm just going to write this back up here. And so what we see here is, when we convert each of the terms in this sequence to angles, just like this, well then, we see that the angles have this behavior. As we move from one term in the sequence to the next, the angle just gets halved. So now, let's play around with this. Now, just like how we're labeling the initial term of the sequence x, we're going to 
and label the initial angle theta. So if we apply this result repeatedly, what do we get? Well, we have theta equal to theta zero, but according to this result, theta zero is equal to two theta one. If we apply this result again, this is equal to two squared theta two. If we apply this result again, this is equal to two cubed theta three. Applying the result again, we have two to the fourth theta four, and so on. So by induction, this tells us that we have two to the n theta n equal to theta for all n. If we divide two to the n on the other side, that tells us we have theta n equal to theta over two to the n for all n. Okay, so let me just write this over here. And now we can actually express what these two sequences are in terms of theta. Starting with this sequence, we know that xn is equal to tangent of theta n. And we know that theta n is equal to theta over 2 to the n. So we get this. And as for this sequence, well, we know that xn over the square root of 1 plus xn squared is equal to sine theta n. And theta n is just equal to theta over 2 to the n. So we get this. Now remember, earlier we said that this sequence is increasing while this sequence is decreasing. And we're about to see geometrically how that happens. So really, what that means is this sequence is the increasing one while this sequence is the decreasing one. Now if we write out the terms of the increasing one, we get something like this. We essentially get this. And as for the decreasing one, we get essentially this. Now, theta is actually equal to the arc tangent of x because theta is equal to theta zero, which is equal to arc tangent of x zero, which is equal to arc tangent of x. And so we have that this sequence is increasing to the arc tangent of x while this sequence is decreasing to the arc tangent of x. In the same way, this sequence is increasing to theta while this sequence is decreasing to theta. So this is essentially the behavior of these two sequences in disguise. Really, all that's happening here is we're given a positive real number x, and we let theta be the acute angle such that tangent of theta is equal to x. Then all of these two sequences are doing is precisely this. And so now, let's see how this happens geometrically. Now, let's recall our representation of arc tangent of x from the beginning of this video. So if we have a circle of radius 1, and the length of this line segment is x, then it turns out the length of this arc is precisely arc tangent of x. So now, we're about to see how those two sequences converge to this arc length geometrically. So starting with the decreasing sequence, when we convert everything in terms of theta, this is the first term of the decreasing sequence. We have tangent of theta. The second term is two times the tangent of theta over two. As you can see, when you add up the lengths of these two line segments, you get two times tangent of theta over two. As you can see, we're getting closer to the arc length. The next term of the sequence is four times tangent of theta over four. And as you can see, we're again getting closer and closer to the arc length. As for the next term of the sequence, we have eight times tangent of theta over eight. As you can see, all these line segments have length tangent of theta over eight, and we're getting even closer to the actual arc length. So that's essentially how the decreasing sequence is behaving. So now let's go to the increasing sequence. The first term of the increasing sequence is sine of theta, which looks like this. The next term is two times sine of theta over two. The next term is four times sine of theta over four, right? And if we keep going, right, the next term is eight times sine of theta over eight. 
as you can see, all these line segments, they have length sine of theta over 8. And we're getting even closer to the actual arc length. And yeah, that is pretty much how these two sequences are converging to the arc tangent of x geometrically. It's really nothing but trigonometry in disguise. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.